Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shout at K-pop. We're coming at you with episode 31, and we're recording on Monday, March 11, 2019. I'm Doug, and joining me today, yo, the kids come back. <laughs> it's Warren. <laughs> and everyone's favorite, Anita. <laughs> Hello. I don't know what that sound he just made was, but like, I, I, I guess we'll go with it. Very, very loudly. Uh... But yo, he's back to give his opinions on the Jerry situation. Hey, that's gonna be up, a lot of time. But before we what's do up, that, everybody? we got lots of housekeeping. <laughs> oh my god! So as a helpful reminder, please like, subscribe, download us, leave us questions at feedback at sojutalkpodcast at gmail dot com, YouTube, Reddit, wherever you're finding us. And we did get fan mail again this week, which is a great surprise. What? Thank you. So keep sending them. I love reading them. Holy yes. shit. We got a fan mail from someone named Sana. Like, no lie. That's her name. Sana. <laughs> Sana. <laughs> like, what's up, Sana? That is, that is the most lit name in a K pop context ever. <laughs> <laughs> and also this week, oh, but before, we, before I get to the questions she left, uh, thank you for your fan mail. It means a lot to us. The support is great. Mm-hmm. We love it. And also, she sent us a lit question, and we're also going to answer Derek's question from last week. So Derek's yes. question mm-hmm. was regarding if we formed the group, what kind of things would happen? And Sana's question is our opinions on fan fiction. So you should stay tuned till the end of the show because we're going to answer both of those questions. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. Normally, we talk about big new releases here, but this week, it's a big new release, singular. Um, we had today, March 11th, we had Wusok and Lai Kwai Lin's unit debut with i'm a star so what did y'all think mm-hmm. of this song i like it i really like it <gasps> oh what <laughs> look at this yo low-key aesthetically this like is it? a beautiful music video and the it's song really is low-key really lit <laughs> man like a bruno mars kind of vibe kind of like mm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. like yeah no, no. this this vibe. exceeded my expectations by about like tenfold like i wasn't expecting much but this was really good yeah i mean i could tell from the teasers it was gonna be pretty good but overall i want to see the live performance to this dude cube threw all the money at this music video i think oh everything <laughs> Ew, I, maybe maybe cube should just do units because i know yoja idol's <laughs> big <laughs> but like man these their, their their track record with units is amazing now Mm-hmm. I want to say one thing. Okay, this is my one negative before we get back to the positive, right? Oh no. Okay. He's he, like Kwai Lin is still very raw as a talent. Yes. Mm, yeah. I, I partially young. agree. He's young. He hasn't. He doesn't have yeah. that much experience outside of Produce and One One. Because if I remember correctly, when they came on to Produce One One Season Two, he had been a trainee for less than six months, I think. So he's yeah, very he's raw. Very new. Wasn't I, he the kid who was, like, doing, like, the basic uh, yep, exercises? he was doing the basic exercises as their audition. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. So what I will say, though, is I think there is um, a little bit of a skill difference between Wusok and Lai Kwai Lin. That's a little bit evident in this song. In terms of, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if they wrote their own raps, but even the, the, the lyrics were a little bit different level, I would say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, may, maybe it makes sense in Korean, but as English speakers, some of the English was a little bit awkward. But I don't, I don't fault them I mean, too much about that. This is, this is K-pop, all right? Our yeah, English, yeah, yeah. English. But going Come back, on. going back to it, that was it for the negative thing. Other than that, amazing song. Like, wow. I really liked it. Yeah. I, I suggest all of you listen to this because it's surprising mm-hmm. how good this is. Yeah. I okay. Honestly, I went in like ready to like dislike it and get like pull out my hot takes. But I was like, shit! Like, yeah. look at these fucking plucks. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Going. <laughs> it's very rare that the three of us all like a song. So you gotta go listen to yes. Wusok and Lai Kwai Lin's "I'm a Star." So th- that's Yo, it for the big to... new releases. <laughs> Warren, you got a shout out? Oh, I was gonna shout out to my cousin. His name is Wusok. Hey, hey <laughs> shout out to Warren's cousin. <laughs> uh, but um. Hi. Can I make some comments about last week's releases? Oh yeah, oh, T- uh, oh. TXT. What's the hot take on that? All right, all right. I gotta, I gotta run down each of them real quick. All right. Um, let's start with a couple ones I remember clearly. Just two. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So you mentioned Dean writing idol songs. Dean actually wrote a couple idol songs. He, uh, he goes by a. Uh, yeah, I think he wrote an EXO song at one point. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. Yeah, he he goes by Dean Influenza, Influenza when he writes yeah. songs. Yeah. So he actually does that shit. But this song was actually written by Cosmic Boy, which I yes. suggested you listen to a couple of weeks ago. 
Mm -hmm. uh, same guy who made uh, Breaking Bad from Show Me the Money. Good shit, good yeah. guy. I actually didn't like the song though. I'm sorry. <sighs> Warren. <laughs> okay, I I just I just I I listened to it a lot. I'm not gonna lie, and I got yeah. I got tired of it real quick. I'm not. That's just well. how it is. I listened to it a lot, and then I was like, you know what? I, I'm gonna move on. It was good. Shit. It was good shit though. You know, like it, it was great while it lasted. Personally. <laughs> Last week, if you if you asked me last week, I would have been like, "Yeah, it's a great song." Oh, uh, that was good. Uh, How's one's debut single? That was solid too. G Idol single. Sorry, is that a mini album? I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. I actually agreed with everything you guys said. I like the verses. Yes, the verses the were so lit on that song. Yeah. It's it's a shame mm -hmm. that the chorus isn't all the way there. All right, Sunmi Noir. What's what's the opinion on that? So this is like a prime example of like this like new coming trend in K-pop, right? Retro, Where... f like funk-ish type of stuff. Well, I don't know. That that too, but I meant more like in terms of concept as an artist. Ah, uh, yep, yep. We have more people in K-pop where they're like they're trying to sell themselves as an artist. And that's not really a bad thing. It's actually a really great thing. And Some it for, actually. Oh, for me, people that come to mind are Taemin, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if she's super K-pop, but Haze is sort of like that these days. Yeah. They're number one trying to be artists than in, in like straight up like just singers, I would say. Are yeah, you? So many artists were like, mm -hmm. oh, we self-produce. Uh, we choreo our own dances. And, and it's totally, that's totally great. And Sunmi's break taking that to the next level, right? Where she's like, mm -hmm. oh, my shit has a message. Like there's another layer and another layer and another layer. This is like... Some musical Sangyeopsal shit, you know, like. <laughs> Sangyeopsal. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you just made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, for that reason, I was like, shit, like, this is something new. I like, I like the way it's going. I, I still feel like it's a little rough around the edges in terms of, like, mm -hmm, just, like mm -hmm. portraying the message. Mm -hmm. But it was great. She's on a world tour right now. She's in Seattle. She just posted that on her Instagram. Ooh. That should be pretty cool. She dropped a new song while she's on world tour. Bro, I would love to see a Sunmi show. I, I don't know, like, all of, like, she has, she has hits, like, bangers. Like, Borum Da, yeah. Gashina, mm -hmm. like, ugh, she, oh, Ishib Sashigan. Oof. For a solo artist, she has an incredible amount of like grade A bangers. That's a nice one reference. Grade A bangers. <laughs> but um, a, is that an island? It is. But uh, what is your TXT hot take? <laughs> okay, electric bubblegum. That's the word you used last week. Uh -huh. It's electric bubblegum. It's kind of what I expected from. TXT coming knowing what their teasers are like and knowing what BTS mm -hmm. is like. Oh like this is the strategic way they should go in, you know? Be like young cute boys. Do you so you agree mm -hmm. it the concept fit, but I'm sure you don't love electric bubblegum, so I normally like electronic bubblegum. This is like Two two yeah. bubblegum? Two bubblegum? Yeah, it was like I this is like something I would have heard from NCT like dream like two years yes. ago. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, like I, I, I'm like it's like it's coming from Big Hit. SM's doing their thing over there. Like we, I've heard of this like kind of style like too many times at this point. Where I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, Flume did this like five years ago. Let's, let's try to move on. Now. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. But those were your hot takes on last week's songs. Yes. Yo, show winners this week. A lot of interesting stuff happened. So the first thing on the show yes. last week, the N Flying won their first ever award Yay. for rooftop. Wow. Oh, shit. This, I wonder if I don't know I don't have the statistic but is this the longest time in between when a song released to when it won an award it might be because mm, the song came out two oh, months ago and then it won number one I don't know I that's don't just some statistic know. are they still promoting they they came out to perf they're promoting it again they, they're like <laughs> on shows again for it even though the song came out i believe in january but shout out to n flying you deserve all you deserve it because rooftop is a great song and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that they're getting the recognition shout out to n fios yo next one uh show champion yaja idol did win for senorita so they did get a win for the song even though yeah, i i feel it i feel that it's not a one of their best songs but it, it's it shows that they still have popularity but the the, the storyline of the week itsy won four more awards yo oh my god wow they won all three big ones. Inkigayo, Show Music Core, Music Bank, and they won M Countdown this week. Holy Dang. shit. Additionally, they triple crowned Inkigayo as a rookie group. 
my god. Now, the craziest thing about the whole thing is, so number one, they have eight wins, right? They broke SES's 22-year record for the girl group with most debut show music show wins. Mm-hmm. So let me explain that. So 22 years ago, SES came out with I'm Your Girl. They won four shows, right? That was a record mm-hmm. that stood for 22 years until ITZY finally came around, and they won eight. They doubled that total. Oh my god. Shit. Now, if that doesn't speak to how powerful JYP is as a company right now, I don't know what does. Because that's an incredible yeah. number of wins for a rookie. Thing is, like, I'm even thinking about it. Like, Dala Dala is a really good song. But I feel like they haven't <clears throat> even peaked yet. Like, this was not... I don't think they were aiming yeah, to yeah. win all of these. Like, this is kind of scary. <laughs> this is like a B plus to A minus song for me. Like, good, yeah, but not it, like... It, yeah. Not a T, not, not TT, right? Or cheer up. Mm-hmm. It's not that yet. It's like solid B for me. I don't know what you're down. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that they still won eight. I mean, I love Dala Dala now, but like my initial reaction was like, this is aight. But we'll, we'll have to see. If they actually, their next song, if it's like ridiculously good, they might win like 12 awards Everything. for it. Yo, shout out to Huang Yeji. You the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised TXT isn't, hasn't gotten anything yet. I know, their their week to win it is this week, so we'll see what happens. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. But let's move on to what we're currently listening to slash retrospective. So, I don't know what happened to me this week, but I listened to so much mm-hmm. IU. <laughs> like, not okay. one song in particular, but every song of IU. This entire week wow. was an IU week for me because, you know, uh, I have a soft spot for IU. She's, like, the best. <laughs> and I always say, if I, if I could see one concert in korea it would be an iu concert additionally i listened to gongwon sonyo puzzle moon a couple times because i know they're coming back soon so mm, puzzle yeah. moon's a great song they're a strong rookie group i wonder if they can follow it up lastly i listened to hong jin young's new song mm. love tonight so if y'all oh, don't know back? hong jin young um is a famous singer slash celebrity slash entertainer who her style of music is called trot, and trot is pretty much Korean country music. So it's very, it's a little techno-y and retro sounding. Mm-hmm. And she's like the most popular artist. And plus, if you ever see her on variety shows, I'm sure most of you have seen her on Running Man and things like that. She's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And she's low-key an incredible singer. And she just kind of gets the moniker of being a funny person because of her personality, but she's actually a great singer. So that's all I listened to this week. Warren, what'd you, what'd you got? Um... So, uh, I, I think I can break down my playlist this week into two main groups. Uh, the first group is the jury group of the, <laughs> of the shit. I've been listening to a lot of uh, I Am by 1AM. Which that's a good song. It, it involves jury herself. And yeah. that's, that's from the Produced 48 concept songs, right? Bro, I Am is lit. It's a good song. I went back and listened to all the songs. And the only thing that aged really well for me is I am. Like, this is like... No, rumor. Yeah. Rumor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor's my shit. Oh, my God. I, I, th- I don't... I, I'm not a fan of, like, the Moomba Stone thing still. Like, okay. I'm like, it's I, whatever. Um. So, yeah. I had... I, I stopped listening to it for a long time. Because every time I listened to it, I would be, like, all sad. Because mm-hmm. she didn't go anywhere. She went back to Japan. But now I can listen to it in peace and happiness. Because <laughs> you got good news all over the fucking place. So that's good. Um, So that's one thing. Uh, Same goes for Short Skirt by AOA. Oh. Um, Because Jury performed it. <laughs> are, are, we, are we talking about AOA version <laughs> or Produce 48 version? Short I mean, skirt. I don't think they have a song out with the uh, Produce 48 version. I mean, there was a performance, and that was where like Joyudi pretty much started rising because of her high yeah. note there. But I mean, dude, AOA, that, dude. we got some AOA news. Not the best news later, but like oh. mm-hmm. short hair and mini skirt, I think are their two best songs. Go listen to them, please. They're tremendous K-pop songs. Well, all right, I see. There's a transition now in your song choice. <laughs> so right. we go from the actual K-pop into what is this Korean rap? Um, mm-hmm. I've been listening to a lot of this album called Sara Sum Show 2, Breathe 2 by Yum Ta. I introduced him the last time I was on the episode. He's like, I introduced him as like, if, if Dean or like, Jay Park was like, nearing his 40s. Mm, That's kind yeah, of what yeah. he sounds like. He's got like, it's, he's got that like, vibe, but with like a Ajushi kind of vibe. Like, it's like a good mix. It's great. 
And it's like, there's a couple tracks on there, like uh, Flight. Uh, there's another track called um, The World Is Mine. It's great. You, I, it's, it's actually not stupid, like an educated kid. It's actually solid, good music. <laughs> um, the featuring artists, there's Future, uh, Future Six Waver, The Quiet, a bunch of other people. And, of course, our Lord and Savior, an educated kid, is there as well. So go check it out. Good album. Um, there's another song I've been listening to a lot called Blue Hawaii by Punchinello featuring Crush and Penomeko. Um Punchinello is like one of those rappers that was on Show Me The One Year a couple years ago. He disappeared because of some family issues. He's back. Solid fucking album, but the intro track, this is the first track of the album. The best track I've heard in a long time by uh, Punchinello. Good shit. It's kind of... The word Blue Hawaii kind of shows you what it, what it's like. It's like... It's kind of like the tropical chill vibe, you know, it's like spring break mm, kind of vibe. Mm. It's, it's chill. It's not too exciting, but it's like you listen to it and you're like, oh. Punch Nello oh. is like the rapper's rapper because everyone mentions him in their bars because they're like friends with him and they all respect him, I would say. Mm. I, I've, I've heard him reference really close in like five people's bars. Maybe because he has such a good name, like Nello on the punch, right? <laughs> It always comes up. It always comes up. He's like good friends with uh, Crush, Zico, Dean, yeah. uh, Fancy Child, Igloo, those kind of kids. So also, I check it out. Also, seen written here, it's featuring Crush and Peno Maker, and y'all, those are two other lit people. We got paid, but got paid. That's my Peno Maker impression. Oh. Arido, what you got? Well, let's transition. One of the songs that I've been listening to, it's not that recent. It's, it's from Shike's new album, newest album, featuring Crush. It's called Vanessa. Um, so this song, I would describe this song as a mixture of like R&B type of beat with like lo-fi. So it's Ooh. slow, but it, it sounds really cool. A lot of like synth, like echoey sounds to it. Um, I think Crush is great. I-, I wish I would hear more about Crush. I want him to come up with a new album. Um, but yeah, this one's a really good song. And then I actually really like Just to Focus on Me. I've been listening oh, to shit. that a lot. Yes! <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't and... like it. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I-, I get what you mean about being repetitive or like getting tired of it because it it doesn't have like a rise and like a build up to it but i think that's what makes it really interesting oh. to listen to that's not what i meant sorry no i meant more like it was on repeat for like a full day oh yeah well and I then i was like that was like good so too much sorry yeah well, I listened to the other songs on the album, and they they all are on the same same vibes, like like very very R and B type of songs in the album. Um, definitely would check it. And then the next one, this one I kind of discovered by accident. So I was listening to I watched the live performance of the T X T. Uh, new, the newest song they had, and their B side uh, is called "Blue Orange Aid." I don't know how I feel about the title, but um, the song is really good. It's very, very refreshing, um, and I, I actually prefer this over their title track. And I kind of oh. wish they would have promoted this one more, um, but it's still really good. The, the dance is great. Uh, yeah, I think I don't know. I feel like if if bubblegum type of songs is not your thing, like their title track, I feel like this one is more a pro. Um, it's still very poppy, but it's not like overly cutesy. Warren, maybe you should go listen to this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to. This sounds interesting. What kind of what kind of vibe is like? You know, you just refreshing, bro. It's, it's all right, blue orange. <laughs> It's like I feel like it's, it has a lot of summary type of summary. Wait, you cut off any of the summary type of vibes? Yes, yes. 
Okay. See, that makes sense. I, I, I'm down for some summer. It's been hella cold lately <laughs> around here. And I bet you it's been even colder in Michigan. But that's all what we've been listening to this week. All right. The, it's the moment y'all been waiting for. Warren, I need you to, to hold it in for about a minute while I read these news titles <laughs> real quick. Because it's going to start a discussion. So, the, this section is called Warren's hot take on jury leaving AKB and joining Wulim. So, Produce 48 contestant, AKB 48's Takahashi Judy to make Korea debut. Can he, sorry, can he pause for a second? Did you guys say something? I was like, my internet was going local for a long time. Um, from where, what point? I started, uh, you started going, um, missing right after, um, refreshing. And then I heard the word Michigan from Doug and that was it. Okay, I okay. I transitioned well into the news. I can start over the new stuff. Oh, okay. Sorry, you didn't. You didn't like call me, did you? Cause I thought I heard. My no, name. no, you didn't have to talk. I just mentioned your name. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right, I can start again. All right. So I'll now, now it's time. All right. <laughs> I'll start again now. All right. So now it's time for the news and events from last week. I'm gonna need Warren to rein it in for about like a minute because I need to read these titles. I I know he's waiting though, but this section's <laughs> called. Warren's hot takes on jury leaving AKB and joining Wu Lim Entertainment. So here's the jury. title of the news articles. Uh, <laughs> Produce 48 contestant AKB 48 Takahashi Judy to make Korean debut through Wu Lim Entertainment girl group. Additionally, Wu Lim Entertainment confirms Judy contract news saying debut is sooner than later. Lastly, a little bit related, Mystic Entertainment responds to rumors that they met with former AKB 48 slash Produce 48 contestant Takayuchi Miyu. So that one's a little interesting too. And they also confirmed that. So Judy and Miyu are both coming to Korea. Warren, you can now give some hot takes. <sighs> all right. <Go> play. <laughs> We're here. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. First of all, first of all, right. I woke up that morning and I saw the first thing I saw in my phone was Doug's message. I was like, it was like 9 a.m. or some shit. And I was like, he was like, he, he, what, what did you send me? It was something along the lines of Jury coming to Korea. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, she was in Korea like a month ago. Because she was in Korea a month ago. And, and, and us, the fans were like, she's probably here to just chill out. Because she likes chilling out in Korea. Little did we know, she was talking to Uli. What the fuck? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, let, me, let me calm down a bit. All right, take a little sip of water. Well, no, no. Here's the first thing I want to ask. So, as a Jury fan, right? Yes. From, a, from a 0 to a 10, this is like a 10 in terms of you being satisfied, right? This is like 15. So, oh. so the reasoning for that, I, I'm assuming, is because her career in AKB pretty much stagnated, right? She did everything she could, correct? She did everything she could, and all her future career paths weren't really promising within, within mm -hmm. AKB. I mean, th within AKB or like within Japan's uh, media entertainment in general. So we were all pretty concerned. As far as I know, the Japanese fans were kind of concerned as well because we were like, like she wants to be an actress. That's her end goal. What's what's their what's the Japanese opinions of this? Like, what is the fan like AKB48 fandom's opinion of Judy starting a new career in Korea? The 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 Japanese fans that we're communicating with were as in the Korean Korean fandom. Um, the Japanese fandom that we're communicating with is very positive about it. Um, they're very on board. Mm -hmm. Um, they really support her decision. Um, they're really, they're also really worried. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, um, no, there's there's a lot of no. risk here. There's a lot yeah. of risk. They're very concerned, but they they think. Um, well, what what they've been saying is that they really want to support um her decisions because. Loki, this has been going on for a while, right? Because mm. um, uh. Jury came out on radio, and she, she yeah she came out on ANN, which is All Night Nippon, one of the AKB radios, and she basically revealed that Woolen contacted her right after the show ended, basically. Wow. Dang. Yeah. So it's been going on for a while. Um, I am also subscribed to her paid messaging service, where she sends you messages <laughs> like two three times a day. And sometimes it's something as simple as, I hope you have good breakfast, even though I'm in America, so it's like, <laughs> I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> but sometimes it'll be stuff like, I'm worried about my career. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm really concerned. And going through those messages, it was kind of obvious. We were, we were like, all right, just concerned. Something's going on. Did you thought, be a change. You thought it was more likely she was just going to leave and do something else in Japan than come to Korea, correct? 
I was very strongly thinking she was gonna quit um AKB and join like an actress uh, group or something like that. So we know we know you're happy about now that she's in Korea, but are you happy that she chose Woolim specifically? That's that's an right. interesting question right there. Here's the thing. I am by no means particularly a Woolim fan. Mm-hmm. I like the Lovely songs. I'm not a Lovely fan. I like Yoonsung. I'm not a Yoonsung fan. Infinite, they're great. I'm not a fan. What, what the Golden Child? I think they're fine. I am they're all just people I don't like. But not dislike. They're like, mm-hmm. they're like, they're like the kids in your class. Where like, hey, you know, like I say hi to them. I'll talk to them if they're next to me in class. <laughs> but I, but I, I'm not gonna uh, be like, let's hang out. You know, like. I think things are looking up for them though. Like, I, 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 I don't, I don't know about this generation of their artists. Like, Infinite is kind of run their course. It seems that Lovelies yeah. might not be able to break through the the high tier threshold ever. But I would say Wulim hat does have Konan B and Kim Che Won in Eyes One right now, and both That's of those true. two are amazing prospects. So things are looking up, I would say, for Wulim. It's there's a lot of I would say there's an air of hope personally mm-hmm. for this. Well, here's the thing, right? Thinking about all like the you know, all the major labels and all the secondary tier major labels, mm-hmm. I don't think anything's a better fit for Julie Jury than Wulim. Yeah, like yeah. I, don't, I can't, I can't see her in Cube. Let's be real here. Right. Yeah. She's not gonna be with Black Label. She kind of has the same vibes as K and Soo Jung from Lovelies. I saw a bunch of posts comparing how their CEO must like the same type of girls, like always, because <laughs> they, they they kind of yeah. have the same vibes going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. People were saying like she, they just got her to join because the, like, the CEO's a fan. That's like the. Joke that <laughs> I mean. Around. I mean, you have to have some kind of interest, right? And being a fan of someone means he's gonna protect her and do well with her. Like, so it kind of makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah. So, so yeah, am I worried? Yeah, but at the same time, am I satisfied? Yeah. Honestly, I think things are looking great. This is a great fit, person. I think this is mm-hmm. the best fit possible for her because if if one thing is consistent, lovely always does cutesy stuff, and that's right up Jury's alley, right? Also, right up her alley. I think the further discussion is what happens to Kim Che Won and Kwon Eun Bi once they come back from Ice One. This is my prediction. This is not what's going to happen. I personally think that they're going to make Kwon Eun Bi a solo artist because I think she's too old to start a new girl group. I don't know if that's a hot take. I am a Kwon Eun Bi fan, but that that's just what I feel is going to happen. Because... I'm going to add on to that hot take and say oh. Kwon Eun Bi is going to be a solo artist. Mm-hmm. And then they're gonna add Chaewon to this group. I that's one hundred percent what I yeah. think is gonna happen. Yeah, because yeah. by the time Eyes One ends, Kwonunbi is gonna be twenty six Korean age, um, twenty five international age. That's a little bit too old to start a group these days, right? To start yeah. being in a group. It, mm, it could happen though. Uh, I think it would we... dynamically it would be weird if you all of a sudden add your leader half like a year and a half into it though. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Chiwon fits into the age group. She's 99, right? She's going to be 20 to 21 Korean age by the time she comes back, which is still perfect age to mm. do stuff like that. Yeah. I think I think she's I think she's she's at a perfect age group for this group. Um NB if she joins, she's going to be the oldest member. That's kinda, of course. Like, you're of kind course. of funky in terms of like number chemistry. I I feel like adding Kim Chewon makes sense because I'm not gonna say Kim Chi Won's not popular because she's popular in my heart, but <laughs> in the scope in the scope of Eyes One members, she's not the most popular, right? So adding mm. her into a new group doesn't really disrupt everything, right? Whereas Kwon Eun Bi is generally the focus of what she does because she's 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 a powerful presence. So adding her to a group that's already been or, like active seems like a weird thing to do, right? I don't know. That's just 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 how I feel about the two of them, but. Overall, I'm oh. happy because it means it means that for me it means yeah. that Che definitely gonna probably get a, added to this group too. And as a Kim mm-hmm. Che fan, this makes me very satisfied. I'm just waiting now, right? When is this gonna happen? Yeah. When are we gonna? When are we gonna see wow. them? When, when, are, when is it gonna be a group? What I hope <laughs> happens is they debut them around this time next year, right? In the spring, they release two songs, and by that time, Eyes One's over, and then Che gets added for the third song. That's what I think should happen. Or they slow play it like Luna, and they don't debut it fully until Chaewon comes back. That could be also another option. Mm, that would be very painful. I would not like that. Yeah. 
the rumor, the rumor that's going around within within the fandom is that it's mm. gonna be somewhere around in the summer or the fall. This summer? This we'll summer? Wow. Summer. Yes. What? Like that's 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 the word that's going around town right now. So I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I that would that would be kind of lit though. <laughs> Someone, someone was a fan of them. He, he was like, oh, I have some insider sources. And we're what? looking at August right now. And I'm like, I like August. I like the sound of that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. So the... I already. Oh, keep on, Warren. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. The jury was doing more schedules in Japan. And Wulim managers were walking around with her. Wow. So, like, it's. I think it's going to happen within this year, like, August by the latest. Yo, also, Warren found the job posting for a, a manager of Wulim who speaks <laughs> Korean and Japanese. Warren kind of oh, yeah. speaks Don't a little bit anybody, of Japanese. I'm going to apply. Dude, if Warren, Warren might become Jury's manager. Real talk. Let's, <laughs> let's, just, let's all pray together and hope that it happens. But, um, Yo, I, drop, I want, drop, drop college. Go, go join Wulim. I want your guys' opinions on the, the other, um, produce 48 news Miu. was that Mew's joining mystic it kind of fits honestly yeah it's the best fit honestly come on i wasn't the biggest fan of her um while she was in produce 48 i do recognize that if she was going to join something mystic makes the most sense because she does have more of an indie sound to her music and her youtube stuff mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this was a perfect match also and also mystic is a pretty good company at promoting their artists so i think she's in good hands mm -hmm. as well I think Mystic's an okay c company in terms of promoting. Okay. There's a lot of artists we from Mystic we have no idea about. That's kind of true. But I uh, but in terms of indie labels, this is kind of the, the pinnacle of that, right? Yeah, I mean, Mystic has the SM money, so that's always a good thing. Yes. Yeah, she's technically an SM employee, if we're being real, like, literal here. But shout out to both of those, because I think it's great that you're um, going to... Basically, have a second shot at a career in Korea, right? When That's true. before Produce Forty Eight, they would probably just leave AKB, try to do some stuff, and it probably wouldn't have gone that far. But now, this is like new life for both of them, which I think is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Yo, Team Egg Unite, let's go! Takahashi Jury <laughs> debut, let's go! All Team right, Egg. let's pivot now. Ugh. God, Team Egg! Sorry. No, <laughs> we're pivoting, dude. <laughs> Julia. All right, this this. So this section is what I entitled the end of Sungri. All right. Oh no. Here we go. So I'm just going to read off all the, there was about a thousand articles in both Korean and English oh that God. came out this week. This was just some of the highlights. This is the, the so the first thing that happened was we all know um, Sungri is going through that controversy with Burning Sun, potentially those like texts where he was getting prostitutes for VIPs, all that kind of stuff. So these were the, the headline. First thing, Big Bang Sungri to enlist later this month. That kind of made sense considering he was going through turmoil. This might get the eye off of him, mm -hmm. right? Next thing that happened, Sungri booked for acting as an agent for prostitute. Police mark him as a suspect. Jesus. Oh, no. Boy. Next one, multiple celebrities revealed to be part of Kakao Talk Room where Sungri's alleged texts will be part of in investigations. So this is more related to apparently he and his friends were sending videos like of sexual things they were doing with females in a chat room. Not a good sign. What? And there are other celebrities linked. I'm not going to name them yet because we don't know if they're 100% true, but you can look them up yourselves. Um, the big news that happened today was Sungri announces his retirement from the entertainment industry. Oh my God. On March 11th, the Big wow. Bang member uploaded a letter to his personal Instagram fan thanking his fans for 10 years of support and announcing his retirement from the entertainment industry. YG further confirmed this. Like, they pretty much said, yeah, it's happening. And the final thing that I saw um, about an hour ago was that he's officially banned from leaving the country, which means this is very serious. And it's a criminal oh. investigation now. Okay. Wow. Okay, first of all, That's the scandal is beginning out of hand right now more and more names are being involved mm -hmm. i'm not gonna name them this week we'll see next week when there's there's one idol clear. being listed and one popular entertainer slash solo artist being listed in there's a bunch two, of articles there's two idols yeah you mentioned. actually three idols and uh one popular uh musician slash variety artist but what i want to say is that this is probably one of the largest scandals in like recent k-pop history i would say mm -hmm. other ones that come to mind is um the top suicide thing, Jong Hyun actually suicide thing. Like, this is on the. I wouldn't. I obviously suicide is is not at the 
is higher level than this stuff, but in terms of the magnitude of K-pop scandals, this is pretty humongous. Mm-hmm. It's getting humongous because here's here's the thing, right? I'm just gonna name one of them who's like pretty much confirmed at this point. Tong Jun Young, right, has mm-hmm. been is is the guy who sent those those videos in the group chat, right? He was already accused of that a couple years ago, which is the crazy yeah, thing. And if if y'all don't know, he's the um young guy on Il Bakil. One day, two nights. He's the the indie artist, the one who's yeah. really good friends with Roy Kim, that kind of stuff. He already had issues with sending sexual videos of girls he was doing things with to people, but he got absolved of that. But now he's like in it in these kind of things again. Like yeah. Jesus Christ, is if this is true, his career is over. Like for sure, over, over. He's like staying silent about it, and that's you know that's oh, never no. like a positive. Sign. I feel that the fact that Sungri um, announced his retirement from the entertainment industry, I don't know to what level we. I don't think we can say because there's an investigation going on what level he's involved, but there's clearly some level of involvement for him to retire, right? Like, I'm uh... I'm just kind of scared, right? Because what was behind Burning Sun? Sungri was behind Burning Sun. What was behind mm-hmm. Sungri? YG was behind Sungri. Is there something behind YG? Like it's just it's just an endless onion over here. We're just peeling and peeling. Yeah. And like also, yeah. um, if we talk about the Burning Sun scandal again, the the allegations, um, that were initially given by Mr. Kim, right, the the main dude involved in it, pretty mm-hmm. much everything he said has pretty much been proven to be true. Where he like the police beat him up, people at the club beat him up, where he didn't actually grow up a female, all this stuff. It's it's kind of crazy. And it seems there seems to be a lot of obstruction of justice that happened, and a lot of cl- um, shady club things, but that's not fully mm-hmm. out in the open yet. But this thing with Sungri and the text messages, it's more or less been confirmed at this point, which is yeah. nuts. It's bringing things to a new level at this point, and it's kind of scary. Oh, here it is. Three hours ago, police confirmed legitimacy of Sungri's prostitution chat plus hidden camera chat obtained through another celeb's phone. Jesus. <sighs> That's the nail the in the coffin. Is, like, what's even like you guys said is just that as you peel away more of the layers, like you're you're finding like a whole network, like so many yeah. people involved, and that no one said anything. And how long has this been happening? I yeah, don't know. and I I know I know we're we're fan, we were well I don't know if we still are, but we were fans of these people as as K-pop idols. But at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's right if these allegations are true to defend them because what they did as humans is disgusting, all right? That's that's yeah. my take on it. I will wait until the full truth is out there, but once the truth is out there, I think you have to be real with yourself as if someone you knew this kind of stuff, how would you feel, right? Not just because you're, yeah. you're their fan. If they didn't have this status, like, treat them. Crazy, though. Them? Crazy. Yeah. The thing is, I'm going to put on a bit of a tinfoil hat here because mm-hmm. re- YG has a lot of scandals right mm-hmm. they've had Lately, a lot of at least the past. and they've never had anyone just out of the blue retire that's pretty true i just feel like there's more involved and they're just like trying to like, put it you think you think sungri's potentially might i'm not gonna conjunct conjecture here this is not my opinions but you saying you might there's might be even more going on but they're just making sungri like take take the fall is that what you're saying? That's what. That's what I. I feel. I get the gut feeling that. that Honestly, might be. Korea's. Hey. Sometimes the Korean industry is so shady that it wouldn't surprise me. But I will hold off on making that judgment until it comes out, right? Because I'm sure, mm-hmm. the because there's such a big um, scrutiny on this scenario, I'm sure the truth will eventually trickle out of this. So, mm-hmm. let's move on now to happy news. So, unlike YG, Big Hit Entertainment is making hella moves right now. <laughs> <laughs> The real big three. So here's three articles for a big hit. BTS announces the release of new album Map the Soul Persona, what? which will be releasing on April 12th. Pre-orders mm. start on Wednesday. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yo, oh, there. Oh, they're dude, funny. B- BTS is coming back and back in a. They're coming back in less than a month. That's crazy. All right. Two other so things. Um, TXT becomes K-pop group with most viewed debut music video and. F- first 24 hours they got 14.5 millions in the first 24 hours beating itsy's record of 14 million in the first 24 that was the same year i know dude the rookie groups wow. are, are monstrous this year this is crazy lastly in terms of their american production um promotions txt signs a deal with republic records home to taylor swift ariana wow. grande drake and more 
Wow. All that right. means hmm. what I think they're doing is they want a distribution deal in America so that you can go to the record store or music store in America and find their CD. So you don't have to buy it online mm-hmm. or pay the import things. I think that's the plan right now for BTS mm-hmm. and TXC. And it makes complete sense to me. Yeah, that that's a smart move. It's honestly. so smart. Now that I like once I read that, I was like, that makes so much sense to do that mm-hmm. because K-pop now is at a level where like even Americans will go out and buy the CD. It's not just like a niche thing where you buy it on Amazon mm-hmm. or like online retailers and pay ridiculous shipping fees. If I can go to the store and buy the album for 13 bucks, hell yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> it's a proven investment. Look at BTS. Look how successful they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course they're going to invest. All right, more BTS. Well, not BTS news. Big hit news. CJ and Big Hit Entertainment announced joint global audition for new boy group. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. So this is the mm-hmm. CJ branch that does produce 48 and produce 101 series. So them and Big Hit Entertainment are launching the Belief Global Audition. All right. So they said Belief Lab is seeking members of a global K-pop idol group that will debut in 2020. CJ, who created Produce Series, and Big Hit Entertainment, who founded and produced BTS, will come together. With they will have their um they will first be auditioning domestically in Korea and then they will be doing international auditions as well. This is going to be huge Hmm. so many groups being formed i think they're forming this so that once bts starts going to the army they have two groups still Mm. that's what i think they're doing Mm -hmm. yeah that would make sense okay we have new girl group news mnh entertainment home to kim (laughs) chung ah is going to debut a new girl group so it will be five Mm. members they have i think everyone is expecting a lot now and they're expecting this group to be really good at dancing because of chung ah yes we'll have to see also weihua entertainment they are debuting a new girl group is it it's this next week it's next week yes next week yeah so this is called everglow it contains um wang iran and shion from (gasps) produce 48 Hey. And and there might be a little conjecture here, but Yena might be added to this eventually. That's what people mm. think because she's from Weihua Entertainment. But I'm excited for this because I was low key a fan of Shion, mm-hmm. and also Wang Iran. And I think if if um my personal opinions about Wang Iran is if they didn't do the collab with AKB, she would have made the final group. Mm. Huh. I just think that her being um, an international Chinese member got um, a lot of the spotlight got taken away from that because of all the the Japanese AKB members there. That's so just my take. The, the the pinky position. Yep. Of the season. Mm. Yeah. But yo, Everglow, I'm kind of hyped for that. I've been watching their stuff on YouTube. Seems pretty cool. <laughs> Lastly, we got three quick takes. So first one, netizens suspect AOA did not renew their contracts with FNC after cancellation of their Japanese fan meeting. Honestly, it would kind of make sense um, because they just debuted Cherry Bullet and also AOA Mm -hmm. hasn't been doing that well as of late and they've been around for a really long time. We'll have to see though. Um, I got some Produce X 101 news. So the first thing is, instead of the contestants voting themselves for the center, the fans are allowed to vote for the center. Uh, what? (laughs) So they're letting it be a popularity contest off the bat and I'm pretty sure voting is active for this. And if it's not active right Uh. now, it will be within the next week. Dang. Wait, I don't. I, wait, what? We, I'm confused. So the you, show hasn't started yet. I know the show hasn't wait, started, you... but I guess you're gonna vote just on looks. I don't know. What? Oh shit! All right, I'm gonna find a funkiest motherfucker alive and just vote on him. What? But um, the the, the funniest news to come out of that show though is Produce X 101 establishes new rank lower than F called X. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do they need a lower rank? Bro, I... To make it interesting. How, how about instead of, like, giving them the gray shirts, they don't wear a shirt. <laughs> 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 like, you don't oh. deserve a shirt, yo. You ex. <laughs> oh. I, I, that's just me being mean. But, like... I mean, let's be real. What are they gonna... Like what that. are they gonna wear? I don't understand this. We'll have to like. see. But, like, this was notable enough to get a news article, so... I don't know. All right, lastly, before our, we're going to answer some fan questions, we have upcoming releases. There was a bunch of them this week. I don't know if we'll cover all of them, but these are the major ones. So March 13th on Wednesday, Gong Won Sonyo and Puck Boom. That's going to be cool. Thursday, March 14th, Mamamoo and Beck Percent. Friday, the solo, I wouldn't call it a solo debut, but the solo comeback of Bang yeah. Young-gook from BAP, formerly of BAP. Mm-hmm. And then next Monday, um, March 18th, Everglow's debut. So a lot of interesting stuff this week. Oh, wow. 
All right, finally, let's get into some fan questions. Oh, okay. So the first one is from Derek. If Soju Talk were a K-pop group, what would your idol? What would be your idol names, roles, personality types, group name, possible subunits, member to most likely have a dating scandal? So let's start at the top. <laughs> idol names. So my Korean name is Jae Myung. I think I would either go by Doug, but to say Doug in Korean, you have to say two k. It's Doug. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but I could always go with the first um, character from my Korean name and go by Jay. But there's a bunch of Jays in That's K-pop, true. so That's I don't really true. know. Yeah. Warren, what about JD. your names? JD. Doesn't that JD. roll off the tongue really oh, well? There's JD. Al- there's already a D. JD. There's already a DK too, which is crazy. Oh. JD would be good. J- oh, you can be JM. Jamie on Kim. JM. JM. Oh, oh shit! Just music. JM. So Warren's rap name is Jetlag. I think that should be his idol name. <laughs> Jetlag, what's up? Also, he could be like the rapper because his his screen name is One Sock, so he could be One. <laughs> Thirty. <laughs> or do you want to be Sock? <laughs> <laughs> no. Anita, I wasn't sure what to write here. So. We'll... Yeah, I don't know either. Because Anita, <laughs> Anita, Anita is three characters. That's why it's a little. That's true. I'm not gonna say Anita's real name, but it's two characters, Please and maybe she, sh- maybe she should go with that. Do you have oh, a Korean think... name, Anita? Do I what? Do you have a Korean name? No. Oh, maybe we should think of one. Oh. I'll ask my grandma; she'll give you one. Oh. All That'd right. Be nice. So let's move on to roles now. I think I would be the- presented as the leader, but the fake leader. Like I'm, I'm just the <laughs> figurehead, but I'm not the real leader. Out of the three of us, mean? I'm not really a rapper or a dancer, so I put myself as the vocalist, and I put myself oh, really well. as yeah, the variety good. show specialist. Like, I can see that. Hey, no, that would be me. Come on, let's be real <laughs> here. Who's the funny I think guy? I think it would be both of us, yes. honestly. <laughs> For Warren, he's the youngest, right? So he's our yeah. magne. He's definitely our rapper, our song maker slash producer, and he's gonna make an appearance yeah. on Show Me the Money. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be the guy on first round, and everyone gives me that like shameful look, and they're like, "Why is an idol here?" And I'll be like, "Oh, oh I'll prove myself as an artist!" Oh, look at me, bro. Uh, here's here's some here's some fire from your boy dog. If Vernon can make round two or three, you can too, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That was but no, no, but for real talk, that was back when Vernon was very young and unex- he, yes. inexperienced. I get it. There, I just yeah. needed to throw some fire, yoga flame. <laughs> That's a song by Doki. Yoga I think Anita that. would be the real leader behind the scenes. <laughs> she would be the dancer, and she should go out on some dance competitions. In terms of group name, I don't really know. Now I drew a blank here, but <laughs> the Soju team. Soju team. No. Team Soju. No. I don't know. I feel like our company would give us some terrible name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some shit like acronyms are in though. Maybe. S. T- STC, so do you talk crew. <laughs> STC. How about WAD? Or right, so, dog, WAD. WAD. All right, so, what? so, so, so some subunits. So me and Warren would be called the Bop Tongs. So Bop Tong in Korea <laughs> means like rice, like bucket. And that's a term that means like your head is empty like a rice bucket. So we'd be the idiots essentially. So we're the Bop Tongs. Anita and I, sometimes we ain't that fun. We'd be the No Jams. <laughs> Yeah, and then War- <laughs> Warren, <don't> agree with <laughs> Warren and Anita. I didn't know what to put, so I put the cool kids with a K because that's cool, you know. <laughs> I okay, cool kid. <laughs> Lastly, the funniest one, most likely to have a dating scandal. I wrote that I would probably leak my own dating scandal slash get ta- get Why? caught because I'm an idiot. I said Anita would never have one because she would definitely not get caught. And lastly, because- I said. Wait, why? Be dating. Hey, my contract. Hey, my contract. That's what I thought. Yeah. Don't sell yourself short, Anita. No, no, no. Anita would be like, I'm gonna wait until my contract is over. Yes. Oh, I feel I you. The I rules. feel you. <laughs> Lastly, I wrote that Warren's probably that idol that everyone is happy for them when they do date, <laughs> which makes complete Aww. sense. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's. <laughs> That'd be true. I feel like you'd be the type of guy who I see on January 1st on the headline of this patch. You see me on January 1st, but it's not like a real paparazzi shot. I'm waving at the camera. (laughs) (laughs) That's the photo you get. (sighs) But um, so thank you, Derek. That was that was a fun thing to talk about. All right. Mm, Yes. Another one we got from this was Sana's question. What's your opinion on fanfic involving idols? So. 
fan oh. fiction for those of you who oh, don't know boy. at home it's when fans write like fiction about their it's literally called when fans fanfic fans writing fiction about their idols generally it gets a little i want to say saucy maybe a little oh, bit I sexual work. and not it, safe for work not safe for work pure fiction what are y'all opinions uh warren you go first with this <laughs> all right so <laughs> fanfics right i mean sure i i come from a weeb community so i, I understand what it's like and to mm-hmm. a certain degree i'm like it's whatever but the difference between the weeb community and k-pop is that weeb community is based on fake 2d characters and k-pop is based on actual human beings yeah so that's where i kind of want to draw the line it's like if like you, like, you don't want to write something that would actually be like like could be co- like considered defamation or like someone could read that yeah like for example like going back to like Derek's question if we were a k-pop group and like oh. if like like if no. someone shift me with doug go for it but if oh. they wrote some <laughs> hell no some, don't do that <laughs> <laughs> if you wrote some saucy fanfic about me and him i'd be like all right mm. hold on there like i don't i don't feel comfortable with that shit yeah. i like that you're a fan but like It'd be a little uncomfortable. So, like, as long as, like, it's not too saucy. I, I, okay. Low-key, I get why people read it, right? It's fun to imagine these things. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's, uh, let's throw this out there. K-pop idols are sexualized, right? I don't, I think everyone would admit to that. This is just an extension of that, r- real talk. I do think there's a line, a couple things you can't cross. Don't write, write it about minors. No, that's Definitely. disgusting. That's, that's a, a no. hell no. That's don't do that. Never do that's that. illegal. Get that shit out of here. I do feel sometimes... I don't read... I think I've read like one fanfic in my life. It's not for me, right? But I do feel that... I have heard stories about them. It seems that they're oftentimes very heavy-handed with the writing. Like, mm-hmm. it's all about the idols doing each other. It's not about the storyline at all, right? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm completely fine with people reading it. I get it. It's a, it's a, it's a form of um, c- catharsis, a little bit of a release. I get it, right? It's just like reading like um, romance novels, same type of deal, right? But the difference between a romance novel and sometimes idol fanfic is that idol fanfics are about real people who don't know that they're being written yeah. about. That's yeah. that's where the line gets a little gray here. So I would say, overall for me, I'm accepting of it, but I do see why sometimes it could be a little sketchy. I'll put it like that. Yeah. I also feel like a lot of... I mean, I think it's a good way of being creative and like adding to your fandom um but i do feel like some people might bring like some of these like ships or like the stories that they read that get really popular regarding a specific group or specific people into like the like the community out, like outside of the fan fiction and it's i don't know like i i feel like i've read comments on like youtube videos roughly that was written just like like I, we, but like you can't assume like make these comments about people like referencing that like I don't know it gets a little uncomfortable I, I get shipping culture in K-pop it's it's fine it's fun but like once you start like sexually shipping people I, I it's like for me yeah. it's a little like mm-hmm. that's kind of weird mm-hmm. the thing is going back to what Anita said at the beginning if 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 you use it as a creative outlet, I I I'm like this is fucking cool. Yeah, like, it's fine. If for example, like Uzunya, what the they recently had a magical um school concept. What yeah, if yeah. what if Cosmic Girls went to Hogwarts? That kind of thing. Like that's, yeah, that's fun. That's fucking entertaining. But like, it's, but sometimes just... it shouldn't be like. Sugar came back from the stage, dripping in sweat. Okay, no, no, no. He walked into the shower. There was Jimin. Yada, yada, yada. For all ages podcast. That, that's, 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 I I stopped there. But like, when, when that's the whole point of your fanfic, I'm like, all right, that's a little too much, right? Yeah. Here's another thing, right? It's one thing to write it. And then it's another thing to upload it on the internet for everyone to see. That's true. So, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, if, if you want to write it, and sh- go for it. If you want to share it with your friends, go for it. If you want to put it on the internet, just keep in mind that you could get sued. Because mm. that happens. That is true. But overall, I would say it's it's whatever. I think it's mostly harmless. 
I, I think yeah. sometimes they take it a little too far, but I would say maybe like 90% of the time, 95% of the time, completely harmless. And the people yeah, realize it's just time. fanfics. Mm-hmm. But th- that was those were some interesting questions this week. Please send us more. Um, this has been <laughs> Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. I'm Doug, and I'd like to thank Warren and Anita for joining me. Your boy Warren came back with some hot takes this week, y'all. <laughs> hey. So please like, feedback, subscribe, yeah. download us, leave us feedback and comments at Soju, po- Soju Talk Podcast at gmail.com, YouTube, Reddit, wherever you're finding us. We will see you next week with all of those hot new releases. So we will see you. Bye. 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 Bye.